Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Inasi Malibe. I'm the founder of the Family Hub. I'm here to just um, do a quick video. In my last video, I mentioned some stressors in marriage, in our marriages. Today, I will be talking briefly on how to handle some of these stressors. So we have stressors and we have blessings. Depending on how we handle those blessings, if we don't use them properly, they can be stressors to our marriages. So um, when challenges occur in marriage, in our marriages, we should always ask ourselves, why did I get married in the first place? If your reasons for getting married is mundane, like maybe you got married because of the beauty of your spouse or because you're looking for someone to pay your bills or because of the challenges of um, because of the peer pressure around you, when challenges come, you won't be able to stand the test of time. But if your reasons for getting married is because you want to help your spouse, you want to compliment your spouse to birth the purposes of God for your lives or to birth the purposes of God in and through your lives, when challenges come, you will be able to work together. You will come together and unite and fight and overcome those challenges. So after God, your spouses, after God, your marriage and your spouse should be your number one priority. So one of the challenges I mentioned was I said you can be your own um, stressor. You can be a stressor in your marriage. And how can you be a stressor in your marriage? By being ignorant of how marriage works. By being ignorant of how the marriage institute work. You can be, an, um, you can be ignorant by being immature, by having the wrong mindset, by um having the wrong mindset that um maybe you repeat those um repetitive patterns that you've seen around you for example if you've seen your father or your mother abuse each other and then you come into marriage with that same mindset thinking this is how marriage work without you changing your mindset by, by without you um maybe finding help or learning how the marriage institute work with that kind of mindset, you're going to severe your relationship and you're going to cause trouble in your home. And also, you can be a problem to your own marriage, to your marriage by being selfish. In your behaviors, in your dealings, in your actions, if you don't factor your spouse and you just act as if you're single and you just act as if you are on your own and you have the right to do whatever you want to do, that can be a problem to your marriage. And also, unrealistic expectations can be a problem when you have unrealistic expectations forgetting that your spouse is not good forgetting that your spouse is not 100 percent perfect you come in with unrealistic expectation expecting perfectionism we're all working to, towards perfection we are not perfect yet but then you expect your spouse to be your joy giver you expect your spouse to pay to to provide all your needs according to their riches in glory, forgetting that God is the only one who can meet all our needs according to his riches and glory. You put too much demands on your spouse that your spouse is almost breaking, like they are looking for who to help them also, but then you forget about that. And also you can be a problem in your, your a stressor in your marriage by ill preparations. If you don't prepare before coming, okay, the thing is you can't really prepare, but at least have the basic knowledge of marriage by being the right person instead of expecting your spouse to be the right person. Read books about marriage, attend seminars, you can take courses of, on marriage and at least sit down and talk with your spouse before you get married. Know each other's values, know each other's um, belief system. How does this person believe? How does this person um, think? What does he think about marriage? What does he know? about marriage and you ask yourself what do i know about marriage so you need to pre prepare before coming into marriage so you don't end up being surprised when you get in so and you um also the one of the stressors of marriage that i mentioned i said children so children are actually a blessing from from the lord we said the um the bible said in first uh, in psalm 127 verse 3 to 5 children are a heritage from the lord offspring a reward from him like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth 
Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. So children are actually a blessing in our, uh, they are actually blessings to our marriage. But depending on how we, we handle them or depending on how we work together, they can be stressors in our marriage. Your marriage can be, your children can be stressors in your marriage if you are not united in, in raising them up in the fear of the Lord. If you are not united in guiding, leading them, and in um, bringing them up in the ways of the Lord, they can be stressors to you. Sometimes they might end up resenting one person and loving the other person more because they think this person is bad and this person is good. There is no bad or good cop as far as parenting is concerned. You guys are meant to work together. If you see your wife, for example, maybe correcting your children or maybe disciplining them and you don't like the way he or she, if you see your wife or your husband, correcting or disciplining the children and you don't like the way they are going about it instead of you telling them off in the presence of your children wait for an appropriate time when you two are together and then you can sit down and talk if you have a better understanding of how to parent you can actually tell them okay this is how you do it this is how you go about it but don't just start um yelling at them in the presence of your children or yelling at them in the presence of your their siblings or maybe in the presence of other people or maybe in the public you start raising your voice at your spouse or maybe start calling them like negative names or maybe start um yelling at them it is inappropriate and it is uncalled for so if you work together as husbands and wives i tell you you've solved almost like 90 percent of your parenting problem let your children know that you love each other let them see you together laughing let them see you laugh crap jokes with one another let them see you laugh let them see you making fun of each other in a good way like let them know that you love each other if your children know that you love each other i tell you they won't come and tell this person a different thing and go tell another person a different thing if they ask this person for something and you say no what did your father say or go ask your father and your the father or the mother decide to say if your dad has already said no then it is no let that no stand and then you two can talk together and say, okay, well, do you think we should say yes to them? Or do you think you should do that? Should we take them out because they are asking to go out, but this person has said no. You can decide to negotiate on your own. And then you can come back to the children and talk to them. Let them know that you are united. Let them know that you people have a, the same agenda. Let them know that your agendas are united in bringing them up. And also let your children know that, um, let them know that you guys love each other i think i've mentioned that and now in-laws sometimes you have to apply the same method for your children with your in-laws let your family members know that you love your spouse adopt my suggestion is to adopt each other's family members let see them as your own family don't see your your father your uncle's brother your uncle's wife as somebody who is just like a visitor to your family but you don't see them as your family members see your um, husband's family or see your wife's family as your own family also you might not be able to meet their needs 100 percent, but just see them as your own family too so you don't treat them as aliens or you don't treat them as people who you do not know no matter how much now my to the in-laws please no matter how much you love your siblings or your children never be the reason for any misunderstanding or conflict in their marriages and no matter how much you love your husband or your wife, never be the reason for misunderstanding or conflict between them and their siblings or their parents. Don't make yourself the center of attraction. Please, don't be the reason for any conflict. If they are going to have any conflict or misunderstanding, let it be that this is a family affair. Do not be the reason for that misunderstanding or conflict. And also, there is no need for you to ask them, maybe there's a challenge or there's a problem or conflict or misunderstanding. And then you ask them, okay, now you have to choose between me or your mother. Or is either you choose me or you choose your mother. It doesn't, it, there's no need for that. Don't put them in that situation because sometimes it's actually hard for them to choose. It is uncalled for for you to to compete with your mother-in-law or your father-in-law. It is uncalled for for you to compete with your brother-in-law or your sister-in-law. It is highly unnecessary. There is no basis for competition or comparison between the father-in-law and the mother-in-law or sister-in-law or brother-in-law. It is highly unnecessary. We all occupy different roles in each other's lives. 
what the mother can do to the son. You can't do it because you didn't give birth to him. And you shouldn't expect the mother who has bore this child for maybe 33 or 35 years or 40 years of their lives or 20 years of their lives before they met you. You can't expect them to just abandon their mother because they got married to you just two, three years ago or 20 years ago. It is highly unnecessary for you to put them in that position and ask them to choose between you or their mother or their father. It is highly unnecessary. It is uncalled for. It is not even fair. And don't um ask your don't ask your children. Maybe your children are married, or maybe your sons or daughters or your siblings are married. Don't go to their homes asking them, "Oh, are you enjoying your marriage? Who is bringing what? Who is buying what? Is this your husband's car? Is this who bought the couch? Is it your husband that bought the couch or the bed?" It is highly unnecessary. If they have a problem. In their home and they decide to come to you it is a different ball game entirely you can support them and you can give them good counsel but if they don't come to you with any challenge please do not go around asking them if they have a problem but if you feel or maybe you've noticed there's maybe maybe abuse or something you can ask them but if they decide not to tell you just please be patient time will tell if there's an abuse or if there's a challenge if you feel you have not seen anything, but if you feel something is going on, ask them. And maybe ask them if they need help. If they don't want to com um, confide in you and talk to you, you can ask them to go see a marriage counselor or a family life practitioner that is able to help them. But please, don't be the judge in people's homes. Don't um, create problems where there is no problem. Don't start asking questions that are unnecessary in other people's homes. If you feel your brother or your sister or your child or your daughter or your son is not capable of handling their homes, why did you allow them to get married in the first place? They are old enough to get married, so they should be old enough to take care of their homes without your interference, please. If at all something or an abuse is going on and they refuse to talk, when they've had enough, or grow restless, like the Bible said in Genesis 27, 40, when you've had enough, you break the yoke from off your neck. That's paraphrasing. So if they've had enough of abuse or whatever it is they are going through and they refuse to talk to you and they refuse to seek for help, when they've had enough, they will break the yoke from off their necks. But if you can help them or if they need help, you can find a way to help them. But if nothing is going on, there is no need for asking unnecessary questions. Now finances. Working together to achieve anything worthwhile in marriage is like harnessing two horses to pull a wagon or harnessing two oxen to plow a field. The horses or oxen are stronger pulling together than either is individually. When they move together, they can pull together more they can pull more weight than the sum of which they can achieve individually. Imagine working together using your finances as husbands and wives to achieve the lives of your dreams. Just imagine that, that you put your finances together to achieve the lives of your dreams instead of putting the burden on just one person. Shared thinking is more innovative than solo thinking. Innovation mostly results from shared thinking and teamwork. Your spouse is your greatest teamwork. Your spouse should be your greatest teamwork. We may want to convince ourselves that um, of how amazing we are or of how we can achieve things alone. However, it is easier and faster to achieve greater success working together. It is easier and faster for spouses to achieve greater success when they work together, when they put their finances together. Be emotionally secure in yourself to accept the input of your spouse because every problem you will ever face in your marriage or any problem you ever solve in your uh, face in your life is a matter of interdependence on each other. It is a matter of interdependence on you both as spouses. A joint account might not work for other people, but it can work for other people. So you choose what works for you, but bring in your, your finances to be able to help your marriage, to be able to build your home, to be able to support your family. Bring your finances together to achieve the greater, for the, the greater good for your family. Work together to ask God to help you make money, to help you multiply money, 
to help you manage your money. It is not enough for you to be able to make that money. You have to know how to multiply it and you have to have the grace to be able to manage it. So when you come together as husbands and wives, you'll be able to talk to God and God will give you an idea of what to do to bring your to be able to have the family of your dreams. Even if you don't have a joint account, you can put your finances together. You can bring your finances together to be able to um, achieve the marriage of your dreams. I hear people say, my money is my money, but your money is our money, which is really funny. Our money, my money should be our money, and your money should be our money too. Instead of being selfish with your own money and then you want to spend the other person's money, bring your finances together and you see how far you can go when you do that. There's so much burden on either the wife these days or maybe just the husbands. If you don't work together, there's so much burdens on one person when you try to do all everything all by yourself. Also, career and business can be a stressor in your mind if you don't allow it to work for your own good or to be a blessing in your home. For example, when you keep bringing work together, it can severe your relationship. If you're bringing work together once in a while, you can just let your spouse know, okay, I'll be bringing work home. Please, I have just give me two, three minutes or two, two or three hours to finish. And when I finish, we can come and have some good time and talk. And when you're talking with your spouse, when you are home, be present. Keep your phone and talk with your spouse. Be present and at least instead of you being busy talking to people on the phone or chatting on social media, be present and give your time to your spouse. Balance your work and your family life by letting your spouse know your schedules. Let them know what you're doing so they will be able to work together with you and be patient when you seem a bit too busy for them. And the last um, stressor, like I mentioned, is the devil. But how can we be able to fight the devil by working together? Instead of fighting each other, let's work together because we are not ignorant of his devices. And we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the enemies of our marriages. We wrestle against the enemies of our homes. Because the devil is after families. He does not want to see families thrive. So let's come together and work as family members instead of working against each other. Because the family that is divided or a kingdom that is divided against itself can never stand. So if you guys are divided, if you your home is divided against each other, your marriage will never stand. So be united.